Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome. Happy Monday. Hope you had a good weekend. If you are not in the tacos class and you are just a uh, an observer and a viewer, someone who loves working on fifth grade stuff, um, thank you. I know there are many of you out there, but uh, just know that it's going to be a little bit of a light week or two on... Uh, the YouTubes, uh, we're doing a lot of review, we're doing a lot of deepening, so we're going to be doing kind of our classwork away from YouTube. But uh, there still will be a couple of math lessons a week, so welcome. Uh, today we're going to talk about the link between decimals and fractions. We've talked about it a little bit, but we're going to go into it in a little more detail today. Uh, the ICANs are down there. They say, I can explain how fractions and decimals can show equivalent values. And I can convert a value from fraction to decimal and from decimal to fraction. And then there's what you're going to need. Something to write on, something to write with. The usuals, please make sure you're taking, uh, you're trying stuff out on paper during this time. So thinking about this idea up here, there are many ways to show equal groups. If we go back to our standard place value and thinking about this idea that we work in a base 10 system, meaning as soon as you have 10 in one place, you can regroup it to one in the next place, right? So each time you move to the left, each place is 10 times more, 10 times greater, okay? So 110 is 10 times as much as 1, 1. 100 is 10 times as much as a 10, right? Likewise, when we move to the right, we can say it's, we wouldn't necessarily say 10 times less, we would say 1 tenth as much. Right, so 1 tenth of 10 if I were to take 10 and split it into 10 equal pieces, how much would, would one of those tenths be? Be one. One tenth of 10 is one, or one tenth times 10 equals one, right? This plays out when we cross the decimal point, right? Because one Taking one thing, dividing it into 10 equal pieces, has the value of 1 tenth. 1 tenth of 1, right? So this is our tenths place. Okay. Here, too, taking 1 tenth and saying, what's 1 tenth of 1 tenth? If I take my value of 1 tenth and divide that into 10 equal pieces, right? Or I'm 1 times 1 is 1, 10 times 10 is 100. So this is the hundredths place. Okay? So essentially what we're doing is we're, our place value system is kind of showing fractions, but it's showing fractions in groups of a tenth, right? Where fractions come in and are different from decimals is you don't just have to work in groups of 10. You can work in any equal groups that make sense, right? Halves, right? Those are in equal groups of two, okay? If this were a base two system, right? Every time you had two ones, you'd convert it to one of the next place over. So you'd be the twos place, right? If you had two twos converted to the next place over, it'd be the fours place, right? Very confusing that way. So disregard that. But the idea being fractions and decimals are serving the same purpose is they're showing equal groups, okay? The, and equal divisions. The only difference is decimals, because of this DEC at the front, like decagram or decahedron or um, decapod. Did you know that crabs, I found this out on Jeopardy yesterday, crabs are technically decapods because they have Eight legs and two claws, making ten limbs total. Ten deca pod foot. Decapod. Amazing. Right? So 
I completely lost my train of thought because now I'm thinking about crabs. Lesson at home. So essentially what we're doing here is when we think about decimals, we're only thinking about groups of 10 and multiples of 10 versus fractions, groups of anything. Now, how do we convert a decimal to a fraction or a fraction to a decimal? Now, decimals to fractions can be a little more straightforward. Okay. Um, if you're going from a decimal to a fraction, all we really need to think about is what's the name of our decimal? That's going to give us what our fraction is. So if you have something like right, 0 0.62, think about what's the last place your decimal goes to. In this case, it would be tenths and hundredths, and there's your denominator, right? 62 hundredths. Now, if you wanted to go a step further, you could simplify this fraction, right? Because I'm noticing 62, that's an even number. 100, that's an even number. So I know both of them are divisible by 2. So I could do 62 divided by 2 and 100 divided by 2. Again, using our equivalents of 1 to make equivalent fractions. 62 divided by 2 is 31. 100 divided by 2 is 50. And I don't think there's any common factors there. So 31 fiftieths would be another way to write 62 hundredths as a fraction. They're both equivalent and both accurate. Right? One is just a little simpler than the other because ideally we want to get our denominator um, to as small a value, well, as small a digit, but as large a piece as we can. Okay, um, try another one here. How about this one? Okay, zero point nine. Is it nine hundredths or is it something else? Hmm, right? Easy peasy with this one. What's the place just to the right of the decimal point? The tenths place. So you end up with nine tenths. And this one's as simple as it can get. If you had eight tenths or six tenths or four tenths, where they're both even numbers, then you could potentially simplify that fraction. But nine tenths is the most accurate fraction. Last one that we'll try, decimal to fraction. Uh, let's try 0 0.378. Now, think about, we have the tenths, we have the hundredths. What's the name of this place? What would be one-tenth as much as a hundredth? Right? Just like the next place over here, ten hundreds make a thousand. One-tenth of a hundredth. Oops. is one thousandth, right? So you'd have 378 over 1,000. Yes, you can simplify this. In the interest of time, I'm not going to. But put that answer in the chat if you uh, would like to be an, an extra super smarty pants today. All right. Now, fraction to decimal can get trickier because Let's say you have something like one fifth. Now, with one fifth, we've got to think about I there isn't a fifth's place in our place value. So we can't just put this one plug this one in somewhere around a decimal point and have that be good. We've got to do a little bit of work with our equivalent fractions. And what we've got to find is we've got to say, okay, how do I get turn my fifths into tenths? Five times what equals tenths? Five times what 
or fifths times what? Equal tenths. And use that equivalent of one, use that equivalent of one to um, convert it. So yeah, we're gonna use two halves, right? One fifth times one, it's still gonna have the same value. We are just changing the denominator, right? Changing the, the amount of pieces we break up our, our value into. Five times two is 10, so one times two is two. Now you have two tenths. Now I can write that as a decimal. Put a two right in that tenths place. Okay. Now, some fractions are a lot trickier than others when it comes to, for instance, thirds, right? Because thirds don't go, you're never going to get, you know, 10 or 100 or 1,000 when you're working with thirds. So we won't, we won't go there today, okay? Um, <clears throat> but if we're thinking about this idea here, of using our equivalence of one to turn our fraction into either tenths or hundredths or thousandths, some multiple of 10, right? Well, some exponent of 10, really. Um, let's try a different one. Well, let's try one on the digital whiteboard because it can be a little easier to see. Ta-da. Let's think about... <clears throat> Hmm, let's think about, ooh, let's think about this one. There's a little bit of a challenge here. Three twentieths, and we're gonna put this into decimal form. So I moved my, my head down here. Three twentieths. So there isn't a twentieths place, in our place value, so we can't do it straight away. But let's think about what can we do? How do we get our denominator to be a um, a ten or a tenth or a hundredth? Well, it's already greater than tenths. So I wonder if we can do hundredths. Twenty times what is a hundred? Twenty times what is one hundred? That's the equivalent of one we're going to use. And once we have some hundredths, then we can put it as a decimal. Hmm. So in the chat, we've got Ava tried um, dividing 20 by 2, which would work if we had an even number in the numerator. But 3 divided by 2 would give us 1 and a half tenths, which it's not the way we write it. So we need to do something else. Uh, somebody says multiply by 5 fifths, because 20 times 5 is 100, and I would tend to agree with that. So there's 5 fifths, which I'll put my rectangle around it to remind myself this is a, an equivalent of 1. So we're not changing the value. And then I'll multiply the numerators. 3 times 5 is 100, giving us 15 hundredths. So what would that look like in decimal form? Mm-hmm. I'm seeing here, right? We have our tenths, our hundredths. Fifteen hundredths. There's our decimal point there. And we can put a zero there just to remind ourselves. It's not required, but it does kind of help us remember there is a zero, that we have zero whole numbers here. We do not have any whole ones. Okay, let's try one more. Let's oh, get rid of all my 
rectangles and circles here that for some reason they don't uh, particularly like to erase. Okay, let's try one more here. Let's try... Hmm. Hmm. Let's try this one. Let's try three twenty-fifths. Hmm. Three twenty-fifths. Tricky, tricky. Thinking about our denominator, how do we, what do we need to do? 25 times, well, we can't use 10 because that's already smaller. And there isn't really a way to divide 25 and get 10. So what about 100? Does 25 times something equal 100? Or 100 divided by 25, if you want to think about it that way. Whenever I, go, whenever I think about 25, I think about the idea that 25 cents is a quarter. That tends to help me in remembering how many quarters are in a dollar? How many 25 cent pieces does it take to make 100 cents? Four, four quarters in a dollar. So we're gonna use four fourths to make our hundredths. Because 25 times four is 100. And what is three times four? 12 putting 12 and having an end in the hundredths place. Now I do want to point just something out briefly. Okay, this would be our decimal answer, 12 in the hundredths place. If we had something like this, <clears throat> three two hundred and fiftieths times four making 12 thousandths. Okay, that's where it can get trickier because we've got to think about, okay, there's my tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Okay. Now I've got 12 thousandths, so it has to end in the thousandths place. And then we work backwards. Am I done? Now I got an empty tenths place. So what do I need to put there? I put a zero there. That would be 12 thousandths. Okay. It may or may not come up today in your exit ticket, but I just wanted you to be prepared for it in case it does. Okay. Um, Thank you all for tuning in. Again, this is, you know, kind of one of those kind of getting us ready lessons. We talked about that uh, with mixed number multiplication, how we had all of these different uh, skills underneath mixed number multiplication that we had to be familiar with in order to do mixed number multiplication. And converting a fraction to a decimal is another one where, you know, we're going to want to keep it in our minds because we're going to use it for other things. We do a little bit less of it just by itself, but it's often really useful as a part of larger, you know, multiplying, dividing, that kind of a thing, or when we get into story problems even. Okay. Uh, so thank you for tuning in, everybody. Exit ticket is on Google Classroom and office hour. Please remember, and please, please, please come to office hour. I love seeing you. Uh, I like working on any kind of math you want to work on. Okay. Um, we had people in last week that just wanted to work some two digit by two digit multiplication, or they wanted to work some one digit by three digit multiplication. Spoiler alert, we'll need that tomorrow. So do come and get some extra, get some extra practice. Okay. It can only help you at this point. All right. Thank you everybody for coming. We will see you soon. Uh, back here tomorrow for YouTube and um, my class, you've got a bunch of stuff to do the rest of the day. So we'll see you soon. Bye.